Yes, see that, everybody? Yeah, that's Oklahoma's latest ranking according to the college football playoff poll. And, yeah, I was shocked. I don't know how, how you feel, but it, it surprised me as well. I mean, not that I'm complaining because um, that ranking shows that not only are the Sooners a playoff team, but they've got a little bit of a cushion to work with. Two reasons, I think, for this uh, high ranking. Of course, you got Clemson 1, Alabama 2, and there's the Sooners, and then you have Iowa at 4 and Michigan State at 5. Notre Dame, who I'll talk about in a second, dropping down to number 6. Two reasons why I think for this high ranking. Number 1, Baylor beating Oklahoma State on the road. That kept Baylor in the top 10 in the uh, playoff rankings. In fact, Baylor is at number 7. And if the Baylor Bears went out, meaning that they beat TCU the day before the Bedlam game, and went on December the 5th at home against Texas. That gives Baylor an 11-1 record, and that is a high-quality win in terms of, of what the Sooners really need as far as padding that resume. That right there will send a loud message. Now, I know the, top, the loss to Texas is a factor, okay? Notre Dame beating that same Texas team by five touchdowns. I'm not saying that doesn't matter, but quality wins right now seem to be the big thing. And I think another thing, too, is the eye test. OU is up 23-7 at halftime against TCU. And, of course, the unfortunate Baker Mayfield injury you know, kept him out of the second half. I think the committee thought that OU was in command of this game up 16 points and that if Mayfield had played, I think the committee believes that the game would not have come down to a one-point decision. So I think that they took that into account as well. Now, talking about Notre Dame, I think they took into account that the Irish committed five turnovers against a Boston College team that, unlike TCU, was not ranked in the top 20 and was not 9-1. and In fact, Boston College really isn't good, and yet it was just a three-point game. In fact, the last two weeks, you know, Notre Dame has not looked like um, a, a team that is playing the brand of football they're capable of playing. And the overall resume right now, Notre Dame's two best wins are against uh, Navy and Temple. Both good teams, both 10-1, and one, but neither play in a major conference. And I think that hurts too. Does being an independent hurt Notre Dame? It doesn't help in this situation. When you're an independent and you're trying to get into a four-team playoff, you better um, be notably better than those conference champions. Are they better than Clemson? Well, head-to-head -head not because even though it was close, Clemson beat them. I don't think they're better than Alabama. And... Are they better than Stanford? Well, I guess, uh, assuming Stanford can win next week in the Pac-12 title game, um, of course, if they can beat Stanford head-to-head -head this Saturday, that's one of the highlight games as well. And um, the Big Ten champion, can Notre Dame pass them? If Iowa and Michigan State win this week, I don't think so, because both will remain highly ranked entering their Big Ten title game. Iowa, if they win, will go 13-0. Michigan State, if they win... Yeah, they'll go 12-1, but they will have a conference title, unlike Notre Dame, and they'll have more quality wins, too. So Notre Dame screwed there. Um, their only hope would be to pass the Big 12 champion. Um, is there still that possibility? Well, I think they can make up ground if they win at Stanford, and let's say that they win by 14 or 17 points. Let's say they, they look real impressive. And if Oklahoma looks sluggish and somehow finds a way to beat Oklahoma State, and I can't imagine the Sooners looking sluggish in Stillwater and still winning the game. If they look sluggish, I think the Sooners are going down. So for Notre Dame, uh, they're going to need some help. And um, it's going to take more uh, for them than just beating Stanford in order for that to happen. But remember, it's not this next poll that comes out that's the final one, which of course will be December the 1st, but the final poll will be the day after the conference title games uh, which will be on uh, December the 6th, that Sunday. A week from Sunday, that's the poll that matters because that poll is set in stone. Well, although it's not set in stone that Baker Mayfield will play against Oklahoma State on Saturday, all of the cases right now are leaning that way, though, because right now he's listed as probable for the game on Saturday night. Of course, that head injury kept him out of the uh, second half. He did pass the uh, concussion protocol. However, did have a headache. And, um, you know, basically the staff, the OU staff, did not want to take any chances. They kept him out of the game, although Mayfield's headache uh, did go away um, during that second half. But Stoops' Monday press conference said that uh, he'd be practicing. Matter of fact, Mayfield, I believe, took questions um, during the uh, Monday press conference. Um, practiced on Tuesday. Don't know how many reps he got. But I'm sure Trevor Knight, and for that matter, I've got to think Cody Thomas, the third stringer, took reps as well. 
And I imagine that they're taking it slow with uh, Mayfield. But right now, it would appear that Mayfield's going to play. And if you look at the Vegas line, that thing's gone from three and a half to uh, seven points. The betters think that Mayfield's going to play because Mayfield being in the game makes all the difference. I cannot picture the Sooners winning this game if they don't have Mayfield as their quarterback. Okay, But right now, it looks like he'll be good to go for Saturday without the Sooners actually officially saying that. And for the OU Sooners, um, for the second time in the past three weeks, they are the feature game for College Game Day. College Game Day for ESPN will be in Stillwater this weekend. And for the third straight time, the Sooners will be on ABC 7 p.m. prime time. So they'll get national exposure. By the way, the Notre Dame-Stanford game will be played, I believe, 30 minutes prior uh, from Palo Alto. So obviously both games will be on simultaneously, and both games will have an impact on that uh, playoff pitcher. For the Sooners, a win, and they win the Big 12. And remember, it's just one true champion. The conference is finally living up to that name. As uh, even if Baylor wins out, an OU win would give OU the Big 12 championship, and they would not have to share it with anybody. There's no longer co-champions, even if at least two teams tie for the best conference record for first. doesn't matter. So that gives the conference champion more of an identity and a stronger case to getting into the playoff. That's why the Big 12 no longer has conference champions of the co-variety. It's either one champion or one champion. In other words, one champion. Get it? Good. <laughs> All right. So talking about the game itself, the center defense has to be ready because Oklahoma State, uh, their offense is loaded. You know, Mason Rudolph having a terrific season. Um, a guy that's uh, averaging a little more than 300 yards per game through the air. 18 TDs, only seven picks. Biggest reason is because he's got receivers galore. Uh, James Washington is one of the more underrated receivers you'll find in the country. He's a leading receiver, but don't forget about David Glidden and Marcel Aitman. These receivers, um, you know, I, I imagine Oklahoma State will probably try to throw a variety of short passes and occasionally try to do what they did against TCU, which was successful, and try to burn the corners. So for Sanchez and for, and for um, Jordan Thomas, a huge test because you're going against some skillful, speedy receivers that don't drop passes often. And I believe that um, that offense for Oklahoma State will test the corners big time. Um, the ground game doesn't worry me as much, at least as far as the traditional running backs go. Um, Carson, I believe, is their uh, leading rusher, but he hasn't even hit 500 yards this year. Their ground game has been dismal, second worst in the Big 12. It doesn't mean, though, that they can't run. Uh, you can say right now their best rusher is J.W. Walsh, the backup quarterback to uh, Rudolph. Walsh this season, um, he's had, I think, 11 rushing touchdowns, and they will use him not just on um, short yardage packages, but also to when the Cowboys get inside the opponent's 20, the red zone. And that's where they could really use Walsh. They could throw on the run, or more notably, um, they can run him, especially outside the tackles. So big responsibilities coming up for Tapper, you know, for, for Stryker, for those guys. Um, you know, this will be a pretty good test uh, for the linebacking core as well. So just because Oklahoma State look doesn't have a prolific rushing attack, they get most of the yardage through the air, doesn't mean that they can't run when the situation is right. Mike Gundy's two quarterback system, if you will, is not based upon um, alternating the quarterbacks or getting as many evenly reps as possible. It's based upon situation, yardage situation, and there's no question that the center defense will see both, so they really need to be ready. Oklahoma State's defense, it's not one that makes stops all the time, but they do get sacks, and believe me, they get takeaways. Not like the defense that they had four years ago, which was one of the record-setting defenses. I think that year they were well over 20 in terms of the takeaway category, and sometimes that defense from four years ago would score. You can ask the 2011 Sooners that when, when OU went to Stillwater and uh, got thumped. Um, that defense was opportunistic that day against Landry Jones. Um, speaking to the present, um, you will see Oklahoma State be very aggressive, but at times give up yardage. Okay, Glenn Spencer's defenses are known for that. But the big test for me in this game is going to be to see how the tackles play. You know, St. John with Brown on the outside. Those guys are going to have responsibility, major responsibility because of Emmanuel Ogba, one of the more underrated uh, pass rushers in the country. I can't believe this guy isn't a major award semifinalist. I mean, that, that's a shock because he gets to the quarterback. So Sooners will have to be aware of that. But also inside pressure with Vincent Taylor, 
So, you know, for Alvarez, you know, for Darlington, for those guys um, in the interior, they have responsibility galore as well. And for Mayfield, distribution of the receivers. Um, last week, Shepard had one heck of a game, but he was the only receiver, and this includes running backs, that had more than just one catch. And in fact, I think Shepard had more catches than all the other uh, players who caught a, a pass combined. That can't happen in this game because the Cowboys will do everything they can to limit Shepard. So, you know, for guys like Quick, obviously for uh, D.D. Westbrook, um, you know, for the tight end, Andrews, can't forget about him as well. And, of course, the backfield as well um, with P. Ryan and with uh, Joe Mixon. Look for Mixon to play a big part in this game. And finally, the special teams, and this is an area that has to worry a little bit if you're the Sooners because, you know, J.J. McCluskey of the Cowboys, he ran one back um, a punt return for a touchdown, 65 yards against Texas Tech. And this was when the Cowboys were behind in the second half. It was a big play because it got the Cowboys within three, and eventually Oklahoma State would grab the lead and uh, put the game on ice in Lubbock. So coverage has to be there. The kick coverage, you might remember a week ago against TCU, they gave up a big one um, in OU territory. And last year, Alex Ross, I guess, I guess um, kick teams are really paying attention to him because um, I don't think he's run one back this year after running back several a year ago. So special teams, and it's not just the return game, Austin Seifert, you know, it's a true freshman. He could be called upon in this game. I don't know what the weather is going to be like, but I know it ain't going to be um, a clear, um, warm night. It's going to be cold, and there could be precipitation. Seifert um, missed a kick last week against TCU. You um, might remember um, missed one against Kansas, um, missed one against Texas Tech. And uh, missed one against Iowa State. First half of the season, you know, he was he was reliable, but um, he's had some inconsistency. It could be called upon him. Um, you know, remember he punts and he plays kicks as well. So um, he's going to have um, a lot dependent upon him. Final thoughts on this game. Um, you know, for the Oklahoma Sooners, it's really this simple. You can't get consumed by that. And to tell you the truth, you really can't get caught in that bedlam hoopla as well. That's for us, the fans, the media. That's for us that don't play in the game or coach in the game. The Sooners have to worry about one thing. Play terrific football. Play terrific football. Have a good week of practice, which hopefully they're doing. Execute and protect the football and protect Mayfield. They can do that. Things will take care of themselves, and I believe the Sooners will win this game. I'm going to go 38-30. Oklahoma to win in Stillwater to go 11-1 and and I ain't going to say that this solidifies a playoff spot just yet but it's very very favorable because again I don't know what this committee thinks we don't really know what their agendas are but a win in Stillwater and it's going to be pretty difficult for the Sooners to lose um, their number three ranking at the worst um, they worst case scenario they'll go down to number four if things play out the way they should but the Sears can't get caught up in the playoff because it hasn't happened yet. And they can't pack their bags or, you know, smoke the victory cigar just yet because of one thing. Because of Bedlam. Oklahoma State a few years ago, you might remember, 2001, they were, um, that was in Norman, by the way. Um, that year beat the Sooners and spoiled any chances of the Sooners repeating as national champions. And last year, even though it was not a title year for the Sooners, Still, they were expected to win, and they lost in overtime at home. This year, Oklahoma State's better. Oklahoma's better. There's so much more on the line, Big 12, and, of course, national playoff implication-wise. Hopefully, if you're a Sooner fan, you'll see the following happen. You'll see Baylor win on Friday. Hopefully, the Sooners, of course, win on Saturday, most importantly, and it wouldn't hurt if Stanford uh, beats Notre Dame. That right there could be the path toward the Sooners playing in that playoff on New Year's Eve, either the Cotton or the Orange Bowl. I got the Sooners winning 38-30. Uh, pick show should be coming up uh, soon, later this week, me and the coin. And again, I got to get out of my slump as far as picking. I've been bad lately. Thanks for watching, and Boomer Sooner. <laughs>